Well, the move into lockdown level three in Auckland has, of course, uh, brought about some timely research that has been granted $290,000 from the government and kick-started an 18-month program. Lincoln Agritech has painted in uh, some technology to utilise wool in wool masks. Joining us now is Rob Kelly from Lincoln Agritech. Uh, now, Rob, can you tell us how long have Lincoln Agritech been working, particularly within the fibre benefits of wool, into other uh, applications and now wool masks. Sure. Yes. So, um, Lincoln Agritech and the um, the new materials group at, at Lincoln Agritech has been focused on new uses for uh, crossbred wool for um, or, uh, more than five years, six, seven years. Um, we've uh, been um, working uh, uh, supporting the uh, wool research or, um, organization of uh, New Zealand and its. Uh, strategic uh, intent to develop new uses for crossbred wool, um, and so we've, we've had a, a substantial program of, of research underway for several years um, and now. And um, the uh, opportunity to um, extend that into um, obviously the current needs of uh, um, PPE masks uh, uh, presents a, an excellent opportunity to. Um, expand uses for wool. Now, of course, wool fibre is virus neutralising in its properties. And of course, $13.5 million on the table for the COVID Innovation Acceleration Fund announced in March was a, a great opportunity to take this forward. Uh, whereabouts was the project prior to COVID? Um, so, um, uh, particularly relevant to the work that we're, that we're talking about here. So, Previous um, work that the Wool Research Organisation has has funded and and that we've developed um, has created ways of uh, de deconstructing wool fibres, so breaking them down into their fundamental components. And it's because of those fundamental components and a different physical format that those components have compared to the original wool fibre that creates the the opportunity. And that's a relatively new innovation. And the the need identified to create PPE masks um, allows us to take that new innovation with these wool components and apply them um, into this um, application. So it's so, a yeah a relatively new development. And of course, with a lot of work that Lincoln AgriTech do, it's about commercialising the research. Uh, what are the partners that you've been working alongside, and how does that process sort of pan out? So in in this this particular program where we're um, developing the uh, wool-based PPE masks, then our role is to develop the technology to uh, bring the materials together and establish that they work as we would like them to work and they provide the, the benefits that we think they can. Uh, but we work very closely with manufacturing partners. So for example, we're working with um, uh, Christchurch-based company Fibertech, the uh, Auckland-based company Larnaco, um, with the the goal within the within the program being to um, establish the New Zealand-based manufacturing supply chain, and a key a key benefit here, a key thing that we're trying to achieve is um, as much independence as possible from the uh, constraints of an of an international supply chain in the PPE area. Obviously, the world's demand for PPE is very significant, and that can restrict and can. Uh, make New Zealand's ability to respond to the, uh, uh, those needs and, and, uh, and the pandemic very, very difficult. So we work with local manufacturers with the goal of um, developing the materials and ultimately the process so that these masks will be able to be created locally, manufactured locally. For those who are not familiar with um, the bacterial trapping filtration element of wool fibre, could you please explain why wool is so unique in comparison to the synthetic options? So the, the uh, wool's ability to, to um, bind and, and absorb Moisture is very well known and, and maybe uh, will feel quite quite familiar to people um, um, in terms of how wool can feel ne uh, next to the skin and its uh, hydration char uh, characteristics. And of course, any biological materials 
are carried on in uh, in in vapor and in breath, for example. And so that um, ability to to uh, bind and absorb moisture and the things that it's carrying is really key to its 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 performance here in relation to. Uh, biological materials in in relation to viruses and and bacteria. Wool has been well known to also uh, filter particles very well, and the the use of wool filters in particle filtration has been established for quite some time. But the particular benefits that wool has here, and the deconstructed wool components that we have, uh, are about absorbing the moisture components and the things that they that they uh, uh, carry as compared to synthetic materials, which are generally more moisture repelling and um, and not so good at binding and holding on to those uh, moisture components. This uh, air filtration market must be larger than just wool masks, Rob. There, there must be a lot of applications, particularly in areas of pop, uh, pollution around the, the world. Uh, absolutely, yes. Yeah, the, um, our, our focus within this within this this program is uh, specifically in in relation to the uh, PPE masks and, and the needs that we have currently. Um, but the ability of wool to absorb um, both uh, uh, polluting particles, as you would find in a in a polluted um, environment, but importantly. Um, uh, Gaseous components of, of the filtration, so the sort of gases that occur in a in a in a polluted city, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, and things of that nature. Um, the wool is very potent at absorbing those those materials, and the the uh, new formats that have been created as a result of the work that we've been um, undertaking into new uses, uh, supported by Rons, um, creates lots of opportunities there. And but, uh, very important to remember and, and key to this program is that the, the materials that we're creating are, of course, wool-based, and so they're sustainably derived. Um, and in the PPE mask area, that that's, um, uh, I think, a very, a very significant component because the standard single-use surgical masks that we'll be familiar with now are, of course, all synthetic, poly, either made from polypropylene or polyethylene fiber, maybe, uh, synthetic fibers that are used in a single use and then disposed of, creating an environmental hazard. Um, and so part of the goal of the development here is to have a sustainably locally derived alternative that obviously doesn't have the longer term environmental impact. We're joined now by Dr. Rob Kelly, who is the new materials group manager for Lincoln AgriTech. And we're talking about the surge in not only funding, but of course, demand for wool masks at this time. Rob, I'd like to end by asking you, for strong wool growers out there that are watching this right now, can you give them you know, that light at the end of the tunnel some excitement around the fibre that they are producing every day, that it does have a future? Absolutely. The the particular characteristics that wool has, its ability to interact with moisture, inter interact with the environment, provide a range of benefits that other materials are essentially not very good at doing. Those differentiating benefits are very strong for wool and the, the work that we've been undertaking for uh, some time and that um, Arons has been supporting for some time really provides some significant new product opportunities, which we're excited about that will lead to fu uh, future demand. And that's, that's where we're really focusing on. And um, there's nothing as uh, uh, fantastic as New Zealand Wool to really bring those benefit properties through. Oh, absolutely. We all know that here at home in New Zealand, and it's time to push that through the value chain. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us, as, as I said, Dr. Rob Kelly from Lincoln AgriTech, and uh, the great story that is on Farmers Weekly, research uh, in, into using wool for masks in this week's Farmers Weekly. This is Sarah's Country.